Hello, everyone. So, m my name is Dennis, and today I would like to continue talking about uh, a topic which was brought up by Reynold of Databricks today. And this topic is of heap memory. As he, uh, maybe some of you are not familiar with the topic or are not there. So, of heap memory is a memory which is allocated outside of GC heap, and it's a term often used for, uh, about to reason about memory uh, about managed languages. So you have a GC heap, which is safe, managed, and uh, automatic, and you have off heap, which is something a little different, which doesn't behave by GC rules, which can be pretty much anything you want. You can manage it yourself. You can there are many ways to do it. So why would you want to manage memory outside of GC heap? So there are a number of reasons, as some of you might have uh, already known, and GC is not the best answer to every problem. GC is a number, uh, contains a number of heuristics to uh, optimize your code for uh, best memory management that it thinks, but it doesn't know what, what your code is. It can only approximate, it can measure, it can uh, see what you're doing, but it never you never tell GC what you're doing, so he, GC doesn't know about your intent uh, in your code. It just tries to guess, so it's a guessing game. And sometimes this guessing game turns out to be uh, quite expensive. And in that case, is when you face the wall, when you hit large GC pods, for example, like let's say you have a HTTP request uh, processing um, application, and you sometimes your request takes seconds, and sometimes they're fast, and that's it. They take half a second, and this kind of um, spread out uh, of uh, response can be quite annoying. So if you're working on latency critical applications, this kind of behavior can be quite erratic and unpleasant from any user. And one of the other reasons, which is not often brought up, um, of heap memory is, can also be used for interop with native code. So if you share the same memory that uh, a native code can see, you can um, just use or use the memory across GVM and native code. Actually, um, one might use uh, Deny to do that, but at the same time, Deny is a very complex and elaborate framework which deals with the fact that Java objects are never in the same place. They move around as you see does it work. So it's quite complicated, uh, and if you just share the same pointer with, then it's much easier. So let's shortly overview the state of, of heap as it is now on the JVM and in particular in Scala. So uh, first and sort of blessed way to do off heap memory is byte buffers. Uh, but buffers were introduced as a part of a Java a new package and they're intended to be a temporary place where you put stuff before you sign off to disk or sign off to networks. So it, it's really, uh, it was really meant with um, IO in mind. So it was never meant to be some kind of random memory abstraction. So it, and it behaves like a very low level thingy which you might want to have for, to have to write a solution framework, but you might not want to use it yourself to just work with memory. Because as you can see, for example, uh, here I have this put int and get int, and that's pretty much how this API looks. You pass it an index and you pass it a value and you uh, st store it, and that's very low level. And I wouldn't expect anyone to use this for like, as a replacement for their regular GC heap. So it's low level. Also, it's limited to auto gigabytes uh, upper buffer, so it's quite restricting for some application. Uh, it's also bounce checks. If you don't want bounce checks, you have no option to, to table them. And these are, can actually impact a performance if a GC is not smart enough to eliminate them. So sometimes, uh, I mean, if a GC is not smart enough to eliminate a bounce check, then you might be in a place where you introduce uh, overhead, which you might not want. Another API is SunMisk unsafe. As the uh, name says, it's a very unsafe API because uh, sidestep here, like if you do something wrong, is a GVM crash. So you can, uh, for example, if you read from a memory which you did not allocate with allocate memory, or do something wrong, you will get a sick fault or like an equivalent error. 
like, and it's not an exception, you cannot catch it, it's a, it's a complete crash of JVM. API itself is quite similar to byte buffers, only that it's unsafe and fast. So it doesn't have any balance check, and this is why the performance is a bit better. Um, but it's a very low level, and there is no safety precautions at, at all, so you're on your own. So if you do it right, you're going to be okay, but if you screw up, it crashes the JVM. And lastly, uh, memory leaks is also a problem which you might encounter if you use uh, unsafe directly, because unsafe is very much uh, a C level of abstraction, so it lets you allocate this memory and lets you free it. So if you don't free it, if you forget to free it, if you by any chance uh, not free it, you might accumulate these allocations and, and they will uh, out of memory your application. Uh, another way, which which was uh, another way to do a heap memory, which wasn't mentioned by Reynolds, is GNI or GNA, which are Java native uh, tools to interrupt with C code. As you can see. Uh, it's even a lower level, so you're writing C code, and this C code isn't pretty, so it's not even a proper nice C code you might expect uh, it to be, because GNI is kind of a reflection library for Java to be used from C. To do any kind of action, you first reflectively walk around uh, information about classes and methods, and you get handles, and then you invoke those handles. So it's a very boilerplate heavy API, and so, you might not want to use it because the price of boilerplate is a bit on the high side. It's also low level. It also might limit JIT optimizations, and it also doesn't have any memory safety or memory, uh, memory leak safety because it's C code. You're on your own. And lastly, another issue which is often uh, uh, missed is uh, code with GNI is very hard to distribute because tools like Maven or Ivy don't really have much, way, uh, much primitives to deal with the fact that you might have a platform-specific binary in your jar. So the best solution so far was to include all of your binaries in a jar and then sort of load dynamically one of them depending on current platform. But needless to say, it creates a huge jar and you also need to compile your code for each platform. So this is quite suboptimal for many applications, and it's especially suboptimal for libraries which want to distribute code that does some kind of unsafe memory. So, as you can see, state of the of heap is very low level. So, everything feels and looks like you're writing C code, or you're actually writing C code, so it's uh, not a very nice place to be in. But we are uh, in Scala, and so we have all these nice features to build abstractions like macros, value classes, closures, whatnot. And it wouldn't be nice if we could just have some kind of higher level view of this uh, low level concepts and just uh, write code like that resembles regular Scala code rather than code that re resembles C code. And of course, of course we can do that. So before we build something high level, we need, we need to start with some foundation. And this foundation is called memory. Memory, you can think of memory as a byte buffer, uh, only shrunk down a bit, so in a sense it's a it's like a mix of byte buffers and unsafe. So you have almost the same API, you have less of it, so you have less methods, less utilities, but it's not meant to be used directly, it will be an underlying layer for nice high-level abstractions we'll see later. So. This trait is, uh, is a trait, so it can anyone can like, implement it. So you can use unsafe to implement this trait, you can use by buffers to implement this trait, you can use any kind of uh, memory-like object and wrap it around this and create a memory instance for it. And then it, it, all of the nice uh, tools I'll show later will also work for it. So it's truly all you need to have to represent a memory from a point of view of Scala of heap is just this instance. Okay, so a question, why not just use unsafe directly? So unsafe is fast, let's just build on top and be happy, so why not do this? Uh, the answer is very simple, is that unsafe is actually GDK internal API, and it might or might not disappear in the future. Uh, and that's why we need some, a very thin layer on top to be able to swap implementations of memories if unsafe, in fact, goes away, we will not be able to use it in the future. Or if 
some other nicer abstractions like a byte buffers 2.0 or I don't know what uh, comes up will be able to implement an instance of memory without changing any of the client code. So it's mostly to future proof uh, our tools. So to sum up, uh, we have this memory trait. It's uh, a very much a mix of unsafe and byte buffers. Uh, it doesn't give you any guarantees about what operations, uh, what kind of safety operations uh, memory instance will have. So you can uh, mix and match. You can have a safe memory instance. We can have unsafe memory instance. You can uh, pick the kind of guarantees you want. And if, for example, if you want best performance, you're free to have uh, to, to use some safe version. If you was, want best safety, again, you're free to use a safe one. You also get automatic resource cleanup, which you don't have in unsafe. So all you're not free, you can only allocate, and all of the allocations will be automatically cleaned up once, you, once your memory instance is finalized. So let's say this API is still level, so I don't expect anyone to actually use this interface for in their actual code. It's not meant for that. It's meant uh, as an abstraction layer. OK, so now let's build something nice that we might actually want to use. And there's something nice called off heap classes. Off heap classes uh, come in two flavors, and they try to cover common use cases of uh, data layout. So they are tools to lay out data and work with it in a simple way. So the first, uh, first kind of off heap classes is data class. Data class uh, is a case class like uh, entity. So it looks and feels very much like a case class. Uh, and the only major difference uh, from case class is that it doesn't, it's not allocated on GC heap, it's allocated on the memory you pass to it. So you can, if you can see, there is this add parameter there, add memory, and this parameter specifies where this data is going to be allocated. Class itself is only a pointer to this data. Nice API is just a nice API. You can also use implicits, and if you have a number of allocations and, and some scope, implicits will work just fine, and you will uh, implicits will automatically thread to a uh, memory parameter. Uh, among features you might be already familiar with case classes are like easy to use field access, better matching, copy and write with defaults, so, so you can just say I want a new instance with only this field changed, nice two strings, and so on and so forth. So, a few classes really are really hard to tell from case classes. There are a few places where, where they differ, but they're quite minor. And another kind of cl classes, uh, another kind of off-heap classes is enumerations. This, uh, enumerations are a sort of, of uh, generalized version of, of what we have in Java. Uh, unlike what we have in Java, uh, we can also have uh, different kind of like production rules on this enumeration. So not only do we store uh, which of the cases uh, of the generation we have, we, we can also store additional data. Uh, the data will be laid out as a tag, because it's, the, it's a tag union, and this tag will remember which of the branches we have. And all in all, enumerations can be used as a means to have this easy to use trait like fill. Uh, so for example, uh, once you define these enumerations for figures, you can uh, create a figure which is a circle, and you can have uh, can upcast it. And upcasts don't require any work. You can check it what kind of data is stored inside. You can cast it if you really want. If you cast it wrong, you'll get an exception. You can better match it, you can, and you can all, and you also get slightly modified to, to string, which shows that it belongs to enumeration rather than a standalone a data class. So all in all, it's the purpose of these two kinds of off-heap classes is to bring this light fit feel of Scala to the uh, off-heap uh, memory management. Another abstraction which is quite necessary uh, to sort of uh, have a basic uh, toolkit is arrays. Again, we follow the same idea of having of mimicking API as far as close as possible. Uh, unlike default arrays, uh, 
calls you see here from array dot map does not create a closure. So uh, stuff that Reynold told you that doesn't apply here, and all of these closures disappear. Uh, and I will show you later what, how and why. Okay, so we have good memory. We have good tools to lay out uh, this memory. And what about management? Like, how are we going to freeze this memory? So if you remember, there is no free method in a memory state. And that's intentional because even though it's seductive to just uh, manage memory yourself, it's actually really hard to do it efficiently because free is not cheap. Free and both free and reallocate are not cheap, cheap operations. And there are quite a significant amount of machinery to make it work for C. And of course you can use it, but it's not free and it's not cheap. And you might actually be surprised how slow it is. So rather than using this free that we uh, of underlying press system, we'd rather do something more uh, efficient. And something more efficient is uh, memory pools. And memory pools are also known as regions. So memory pools, region, arenas, you might have already heard about any of these concepts. And the general idea comes from the fact that you, rather than micromanaging a single allocation on one basis, you would manage uh, pools of memory. So you would, you would not care about single allocations, you would care only about allocations of pools and allocation of pools. Uh, an older name for memory pools is memory regions. And there's actually quite a few research in this area which has some interesting results. So I would really uh, like to revive this name uh, rather than use like arena or memory context as a name. So it's like a tribute to the past research. So how does work? How does one work with region-based memory? It's actually, in fact, quite simple. So in region-based memory, you have this region scopes. This region scopes delimit. Um, specific scopes where you, uh, every allocation that happens uh, in the scope is uh, assigned to the scope in a sense. So you don't need to micromanage every single allocation. You only manage scopes, uh, region scopes. And when, once the scope is done, it automatically cl cleans everything up. So if you allocate point inside, you can use it as long as a region is open. And in the end, it will be automatically cleaned up for you. And all of this, of course, is fast, very fast. I'll show that later. OK, what happens if we do s some kind of typical C dangling pointer, like dangling pointer station? If we allocate in a pool, then we close the pool, a resource will be cl cleaned up, and then we try to access it. In C, this might cause a number of different behaviors. So it might cause sig fold. It might give you random memory. It might pretty much do whatever you want. It's undefined behavior, so it can anything can happen. Uh, in our API, in a checked mode, in a safe mode, in a default mode, you're going to get a nice clean exception that says you, you try to access uh, a pointer which was assigned to a region which is no more. So you cannot do this. It's like it's, it's your fault. I fix it. And this exception is nice with st st stack trace. It does not crash your JVM. And that's what you get. OK. so. Do I have to use the scope syntax? Can I just like open and then close based on some logic? Yeah, sure. You're free to do this, but don't forget to close. If you do forget to close, resources will be only cleaned up once you uh, once original objects is finalized. And this might happen or might not happen. So if you have a lot of memory allocated in a region, it might you might over allocate. You might have a lot of region objects which are linked to a lot of uh, of heap memory, and you might oh, Badly over okay. So use this carefully. So if you can, please just use the scope syntax because it's guaranteed to close. This card braces say open here and close here. Okay, so we have these abstractions, but what about performance? Rayna told us we cannot use any abstractions to scale without a performance impact. And that's sort of true. If you just use closures, if you just use generics and scale, it's indeed true. Generics will box, uh, closures will create uh, closure allocations, and so on and so forth. So you might kill your performance completely by this. But in our case, uh, we sort of tried really hard to 
use on abstractions to just allow you to remove overhead, not introduce one. One of these abstractions is value classes, and the other one is macros. Both of them, if used correctly, can happen purely at compile time and erase down to simple constants or like simple expressions which are easy to relate, which do not produce boxing. Uh, and as a result uh, of having of, of using low level abstraction, we can uh, build um, a system with, which has a pretty competitive uh, performance. So here we have three lines. So topmost is a checked mode. So it's a performance in checked mode when you have all of the memory safety in the world. Uh, the middle one is unchecked mode, and lowest one is GC. As you can see, usually there is very little difference between unchecked mode and GC. And as you in increase your, um, as you get closer to, uh, as you saturate your hip, so this line where, where it crosses is somewhere around 75% hip uh, allocated. You suddenly, st you, your um, dashed lines, which correspond to min and max. Uh, performance times of the benchmark are diverse. So you basically suddenly start to get very uh, inconsistent performance. So for example, it corresponds, for example, if you have HTTP request and one, one request is fast and the other one is twice uh, slower and it, it randomly jumps back and forth. This happens when you're saturated GC. So this one is parallel GC um, and it's actually the worst at, uh, at the spread of uh, a performance result. You can use one of the latency optimized GCs, like latest G1 or older CMS, but they trade a uh, lower latency for worse throughput. So you can imagine, for example, for G1 or CMS, you would blue line will be upper and actually will reach a performance parity faster. As you can see, even though we have a library which, which has a very high level feel, we still uh, are pretty competitive performance wise. And this is pretty paradoxical, right? Like, how can you ha have both at the same time? But how does this work? So, is it really true? Like, are these results fake? So, and the answer. Why this two are pretty much macros, so none of this would be possible without macros. So macros are an enabling feature for this project, and this, and I'm not talking about just uh, dev macros, but also macro annotations. So add data and add and we've seen before are macro annotations, and what they do they rewrite the definitions you have written into something more low level under the hood. So let's have a look at what happens once you once you expand a data. It in fact, expands into value class. And it actually generates this kind of code you've seen before, that you just put in, get in, and this kind of code you don't want to write yourself, but you want a framework to like, generate for you. And that's what we do. So you, in the end result, in the end, you end up using the same kind of low-level code you've seen before. It's just you do not write it. You automatically get and only use high-level FSA on top. Uh, as I said before, there are two modes, checked and unchecked. Uh, a checked mode provides memory safety, so if a GM crashes in a checked mode, it's our fault. If GM crashes in unchecked mode, it's your fault. Uh, so use those carefully because unchecked mode doesn't give you any safety. So it gives you best performance we can give you, but at the same time, uh, it has the same issues as a raw usage of unsafe. Uh, it does so, but with usage of a uh, checked mode in, in development and uh, unchecked mode is production, it's equivalent to just using unsafe with a lot of asserts and then disabling those asserts in the end. Although, even though uh, checked mode is slower, it's only about 50, per, 50 to 60 percent slower, so it's not too bad. So, for some applications, I would say it might be reasonable to, to use a checked mode to. For example, if you have highly distributed system and you don't want your remote node to, to randomly crash, you might sacrifice a bit of performance for uh, safety, but it's up to you. So unlike byte buffers, we will not tell you what to do, so you're free to do whatever you want. If you want to shoot yourself in the foot, okay, but we warned you. Okay, so now let's have a look at this very uh, slow looking code, which seems to allocate closure. 
And yeah, I, a map is a macro, so naturally we can inspect our arguments and rewrite them and to produce output. This particular map macro uh, expands into something like this. So it expands into a allocation of, of new un uninitialized array and a for each which does a copy, element-wise copy and application of a function. So if you can see, as you can see, a function is already inlined into a put int. So you just have, uh, you already don't have any closures. But you still have a lot of this message calls which seem quite like high level and slow and possibly virtual. Like, well, what about forage? Forage is macro too, so it also expands. And as you expand and expand, you pretty much get low level code you would uh, have to write before, but it, again, you don't have to write it anymore. So it automatically uh, gets generated for you and you just end up with while loops and pointer arithmetic under the hood. Depending on the mode you're running, again, it, it can be safe or unsafe. Another aspect of, uh, of, uh, of our reasonably good performance is memory pooling. Uh, the mechanism I'm, I'm about to show you is very much inspired by Apache memory pools, which are something like a region-based library for C. It's used in, in, in Apache HTTP framework, and uh, a concept, uh, a concepts used here are very much the same. So the idea be behind having an efficient, uh, free, and allocate is to manage memory yourself, basically. So you say, uh, I know better. So I know better of my domain, and my domain is regions. And I would say I can imagine it better. So what do we do? So first of all, we have at, at, at the most later layer we have system memory, which is represented by this memory instance which itself is simple match or unsafe. When we call allocate, we don't do it very often. We only do it in large chunks. For example, four megabytes of memory. Um, then we split those chunks into smaller pieces and put those pieces into a pool. This pool represents a, a sequence of pages. This is called like virtual page in, in our system. And now a region is nothing more than a, a sequence of pages. Once you allocate in it, you slowly fill the pages and you ask for more. All of this is implemented through 10 specialized uh, unrolled lists and most of the arrows here are constant time. So for example, allocate in a region is constant time, a pool claim is constant time, a reclaim is constant time and so on and so forth. Uh, the fact that most of the operations in our framework are in fact constant time, uh, like allocation, gives us a very deterministic performance profile we've seen before. So we, we hardly have any spread between our low, min, and max. They're almost the same as average. Unlike the GC, which I guess progressively worse as you get to closer to uh, filling all of your memory. Okay, so can I start using this library today? Uh, not quite yet. Uh, I hope to release 0 0.1 today, but it didn't quite happen, so it's coming soon. Unfortunately, no dates. Source code is available right now. And I mean right now. Okay. Okay. So here it is. Um, I got lost, sorry. Okay, so uh, I would estimate the quality of code to be about around alpha quality. 0 0.1 release is going to be somewhere between alpha quality and beta quality, so uh, make sure you take this into account. It's, it's not quite production quality yet, so it's still experimental code, so make sure you understand it. So right now, even though I said, uh, we are memory safe, it means that we are expected to be memory safe, so until proven otherwise, so. So to sum up, uh, I've just presented a quite high level API to, to manage and use off heap memory as if it was a main memory. So unlike most other frameworks which sort of treat off heap memory as a place where you serialize stuff and are serialized back. So in a sense, uh, 
this of heap memory project is online memory or as an offline memory, which is often used in other framework. We also have optional memory safety, which is completely up to you if you want it or not. Um, without it, we are a bit faster and, and around as fast as GC, but again, it, it depends on your use case. We might be faster or slower. What's almost certain is we have very much a deterministic performance profile. So um, most of our operations, like allocation, delocation, are constant time, and this was a very important goal of a project. Uh, so even a uh, check mode is also very close to being a deterministic. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Yes? When you reach an allocated object and then you close the region, how do you go about it validating all of the references? So, um, uh, let's have a look at this. So you see, uh, class in a checked mode, is class is a um, value class over reference. Reference is an on-heap object which has two fields, memory and uh, underlying pointer. So it's not just pointer. In a checked mode, it's a just pointer. In checked mode, it creates a small object. These small objects are mostly uh, dealt with with any other generation and uh, mostly dealt with by heuristic uh, in, in, in uh, JIT. So they don't really affect performance that much. And when I say it's that much, it's about 50% slower. And because we have an object, actual object, we can also do a, a wrap that memory. And wrap that memory actually takes this into takes the uh, kind of memory it is into account. For example, region takes into account it has to be open for you to perform an operation. So you can have a reference of, uh, that closes over a region which is closed, but when you try to do anything with it, anything at all, like any field, field access or field write, you will get an exception. So it's valid to have a reference to invalid memory, but it's invalid to operate on this memory. Um, Miles? Actually, I have a prototype that uses a Scala type system, but. It struck me looking at that, that you could. I mean, if you, if you, if you arrange for uh, values allocated within the region to be all types, which is the one the region, then, then you get this stuff uh, uh, verifying uh, zero runtime cost. Uh, but so, tell the truth, I have a prototype which does that. But unfortunately, due to limitations of implicit, I wouldn't call it uh, quite production ready because. Uh, so. I built an experimental, uh, even more experimental prototype that uses implicit. Yes, I am. I am trying to make this happen. <laughs> yes. So, right now, uh, it's two eleven only. If there is enough demand, I would consider reporting to them. So if you want to then, please uh, go to there and open a bug. Uh, I want it to work uh, on to them, so I will, I will see what what I can do. Macro annotations are, at this moment are still a separate project, which is not supported as a language feature. Um, but that's a trade-off you get, yes. Unfortunately, uh, like, there is no uh, definite information if macro annotations are getting in or out, or there is no a definitive answer on on the future of macro at this moment. Yes? Not supported, unfortunately. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, so uh, the question is, uh, can you refer from off-heap to on-heap? Like, can you have an off-heap class that have a field of on-heap type? And, uh, this is not supported because uh, this would imply that you GC has to somehow get inf information about your off-heap memory, and which is quite hard. There is a way to do it through GNI. They might try in the future, but I wouldn't hold my breath that it's, it's going to be fast. So right now, types will disallow you to uh, 
do anything like this. So you will like you will get a compile time error is that you define the of heap class which refers to on heap class. This is not supported. But off heap class can refer to another Yes. So off heap classes share one memory instance, so they, they can cheaply refer uh, in this instance. You cannot have cross memory instance uh, cross memory references at the moment. Uh, so you, like you're sort of limited to having to use one kind of memory for your application at the moment, or you can write some kind of uh, intermediate layer that will bridge this, but not supported by default. Yes. What are the limitations with the Java memory model? Is when you have a memory that's allocated, if it's not declared as volatile, then there's issues with it crossing thread boundaries. How does that behave? Uh, when you got off heap memory? So uh, my answer right now would be please don't share off heap memory uh, unless you, it, it's read only. So I, I don't provide any guarantees at all whatsoever about uh, consistency of your writes if you use it in mutable way. You can use it in mutable way. So data classes support mutable fields. But unfortunately, uh, at this moment, I cannot provide any guarantees. Yes? Not at the moment, unfortunately. Now that they're in two different worlds. They're in two different worlds, and you might make different decisions off heap than you would have done on heap. For example, the, the, at the moment there is no off heap strings, but you can use our array of characters or array of bytes or whatever suits your application better. So I would say, yes, it's not possible to do both, but if you could do both, it would imply that you can do it. Any, you can make any class off heap, and this unfortunately is not true, because this would imply that you can uh, re-implement like something like a virtual table for a virtual dispatch. And some of the uh, features you might have, you might be familiar for or regular Scala classes are not supported because unsafe is not all powerful. You cannot have code pointer in unsafe memory, unfortunately. Yes. It's a very good question. So right now, the answer is it, it's planned. So right now, there is only one alignment, and it's uh, unaligned everything. And the reason for this decision was it's uh, mostly optimized for data locality on x86. So, uh, but it looks like some people are interested in uh, data line memory. So I will probably add this in the future. Yes. Uh, so, you can, if you have a pointer in off heap memory, like in a regular native memory, you can cast it to this type through unsafe method. But like, there's an API. Say, I have this long. I, I really know that this long refers to the structure. Please make me, a st please reinterpret it as a, a structure. So, is it something you want? Or. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, one of the main appeal of this project is that you sort of through macros and like all of the other tools at the disposal is to remove abstraction, like consistently remove abstraction to get the best performance. And I'm not sure that I'll be able to do that if, you, if I use the existing library. So it requ requires some level of control, and I'm not sure that I will get this level of control somewhere else. So, for example, if I could have even lower APIs and unsafe, I would take it. Because that could potentially improve my performance. I'm sorry. Yes. So. So, if Hazelcast is compatible with this kind of memory abstraction, you can use. Has a class to, and, and you can allocate it in, in Hazard class. Any kind of anything that implements this API will work. So, this trade is really all you need. Yes? Uh, 
Are you talking about this slide? Right. Yes. So, uh, in the check node, uh, pointers are stored as fat pointers, which basically are pointer plus an ID, and it provides an, uh, a level of. So, you, when you store a pointer, you store a region ID alongside. So, if you uh, show up with different ID, it's a compiler, like it's a runtime error, yes. Yes, it's not just memory address, it's memory address plus additional information. Yes? So right now it feels like it's a general thing and I do not have any specific application at the moment. But I would expect, uh, like, if you've seen Raynaud right talked from before, I would expect this to be kind of a framework for this kind of applications where you want the lowest level kind of memory access and you would want to be as fast as possible, maybe at the expense of memory safety. And you, but at the same time, you still, you still don't, want, don't want to write C code, you want to write something higher level. So in, as a conclusion from Raynaud's talk uh, from before, was don't use any high level features, or just use while loops and pointers and unsafe directly, and it's not kind of API that everybody would want to use. Yes? Is it possible to save a snapshot of this info file and then load it up with all the information? So, um, it's a very good question. So, um, I said before, there is uh, many instances of a memory class, and for example, you can have a byte, byte buffer memory, and this memory can be memory mapped from a file, and then in fact, you're allocating in a file, yes. And, uh, you can absolutely do like, uh, so, in, so once you store it in file, like, as far as I'm, it's clear that you, that you can uh, write it into file, but if you want to read it, all you need to is say, uh, I know that this particular address, for example, the first address in file is of this particular structure, and from there on you can traverse the data through pointers and what. Uh, this means, yes, you, you can make a snapshot if you want. Yes? Yes. Exactly. So if there is a replacement API that does the same stuff as unsafe memory management, uh, as, as uh, memory management side of unsafe, we will just implement a new memory instance for this kind of API and use it on Java 9. So this kind of purpose we have for this trade is to be a future proof in case underlying abstraction change and, and so on and so forth. Absolutely. Okay, so, thanks. Any more questions? Yes? So, um, so for long-lived data, it depends on how long-lived, for example, if for data that you want forever, like I want to have this large array and I want to have it forever and I will use it as, I know, as a backend storage for database or whatever, you can just allocate in an instance of native memory and it will create an allocation 
which will exist forever. You don't have to allocate it in region. You can allocate it. You can allocate part of stuff directly in memory, which will be, basically allocate until uh, your application is finished, and you can allocate and, and stuff that is go going to be like in a reuse uh, uh, a fashion which is temporary is going to be allocated in a region. So it's it's a matter of where you put it. And you can also ha imagine a region which corresponds to like. I can also make a region which, which uh, is, uh, starts once your app starts, and you can allocate there. So you can have many regions. It's like it's not a, it, you need just one. You can nest them and, and so on and so forth. Exactly. You can do this. Yes. Yes. So you can just ha have one array allocated once in the very beginning in memory without any region, without anything, just in a me memory instance which corresponds to unsafe memory, and it will be f there forever until you, your object of memory goes out of scope. Oh, I see what you mean. So uh, at the moment, arrays of, uh, of heap classes are array of pointers. Uh, if you want array of sort of inline data, so right now it's not supported, fortunately. I might add this in the future, but at the moment it's not, it's not available. So you can only have an array of pointers for all few classes. Any more questions? Okay, thank you.